Good day everyone, still with me Vanessa and here is the latest ASEAN news. Rescuers retrieved 67 dead and 12 others still missing by typhoon in the Philippines. The disaster agency says at least 67 people are killed and 12 remain missing after Typhoon Vamco tore through the Philippine main island of Luzon. Vamco, the 21st typhoon to hit the country this year, inundated several parts of the capital and other provinces with its strong winds and torrential rain. Loot receded in most parts of Manila and nearby provinces, but several towns in northeastern region of Cagayan Valley remain submerged due to the massive flooding. The government's weather agency says, packing winds of up to 165 km per hour, Vamco is forecasted to hit the Swate of Vietnam coast from Hatin to Quangai province. ASEAN Nations with Australia and New Zealand leaders discusses about COVID-19 in video conference. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc hosts a virtual meeting between Southeast Asian leaders along with leaders from New Zealand and Australia. As strategic partners, our relationship is both broad and deep. ASEAN is among New Zealand's top trading partners, a crucial defence and security partner and a critical strategic hub that connects us to Asia and the rest of the world. New Zealand is a strong supporter of ASEAN centrality and your continued success as you build the ASEAN community. Right now, our friendship and partnership matters more than ever as we face the challenges presented by COVID-19. New Zealand is committed to working with ASEAN to ensure fair and equitable access to safe vaccines, to keep markets open and supply chains resilient, to advance inclusive and sustainable economic recovery, and to uphold a rules-based international order. The 36th summit of the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations meet with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern as well as Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison separately. ASEAN's centrality is at the core of Australia's vision for the Indo-Pacific. We strongly support, as I've said on many occasions to you, the ASEAN outlook for the Indo-Pacific. And we remain committed to working with the region and helping the region recover from COVID-19. In Australia, we understand that your prosperity is our prosperity. It matters to us and we're very committed to it. Both leaders stresses on the need for the group of Southeast Asian countries to remain close trading partners in the midst of coronavirus pandemic. The ASEAN consists of Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. The Catholic leaders pray for flood victims caused by a strong typhoon in the Philippines. Pope Francis prays for the Philippines typhoon victims in the main island of Luzon and appeals for peace in Ivory Coast torn by post-election clashes. I am close in prayer to the people of the Philippines who suffer from the destruction and above all from the floods caused by the strong typhoon. I express my solidarity with the poorest and the most vulnerable families in the face of this calamity and express my support for those who are doing their utmost to help them. Philippines Disaster Agency says the 21st typhoon to hit the country this year inundated several parts of Manila and other provinces with strong winds and torrential rain, which killed 67 people and 12 remain missing after Vamco typhoon. Meanwhile, in the Ivory Coast, the election has opened up to old wounds across the country, where communal rivalries are often tied to politics. At least 40 have died in clashes before, and after the vote as in Mbato, the crisis sparked ethnic clashes. I join the prayer to obtain from the Lord the gift of national harmony, and I urge the sons and daughters of that dear country to collaborate responsibly for reconciliation and peaceful coexistence. After having blessed the crowd, Francis asked the faithful to pray for the victims of a fire at the Romanian hospital treating coronavirus patients. The fire broke out in a room at the intensive care unit at the Piatra Nim County Hospital in northeastern Romania and spread to the adjoining room, killing 10 people. Asia Pacific discusses on coronavirus disease during virtual summit. Asia-Pacific leaders and representatives discusses the coronavirus pandemic and how they could work together to boost regional economic recovery during a virtual summit hosted by Vietnam. 
The 15th East Asia Summit took place as tensions in the South China Sea and United States and China rivalry has been rising. The meeting hosted by Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Yang Xuan Phuc was held on the sideline of the 37th Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit. The East Asia Summit group includes 10 ASEAN countries are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and along with Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, the Republic of Korea, Russia, and the United States. Leaders from World Bank and the United Nations also took part in virtual talks in Hanoi. The Asia-Pacific countries are expected to sign a China-backed regional comprehensive economic partnerships, which will become the world's largest free trade agreement. ASEAN nations talks with neighboring countries about trade relations and coronavirus pandemic. The leaders from the group of the ASEAN, in via video conferencing, met virtually with leaders from Japan, South Korea and China and spoke about trade relations and the 36th summit of the 10-member ASEAN was underway due to the coronavirus pandemic. During the meeting, South Korean President Moon Jae-in urged for further reopening of controlled travel between the member countries. Japanese Prime Minister Suga Yoshihide pledges 2.5 billion US dollars to countries that need support in their economic activities as 200 million US dollars to the ASEAN COVID-19 response fund to help combat the ongoing pandemic. Chinese Premier Le Keqiang stresses during his remarks the importance of ensuring industrial supply chain will be able to continue to support global economic recovery. The ASEAN consists of Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. For this meeting, I welcome Prime Thailand protester over the monument to call on the government to reform the monarchy. Protesters draped a huge clothes with slogans calling for reform over democracy monument in central Bangkok. On demonstrations, they also call for reforms to Thailand's powerful monarchy. <laughs> I want to tell the government to not underestimate the people. Don't underestimate our power. You exist because of the people. Without the people, both the government and the monarchy will have no power. Don't just look at us. It's just the dust under people's feet. We are human. We have power. We have our own minds. Sovereignty belongs to everyone, not just one person. Demonstrators write grievances and insults against the government on the clothes before hanging it from the 3 meter structure. According to police that, 2,500 protesters gather at the Democracy Monument performing songs and dances mocking the government. I think that the protest is highly likely to go on for a long time, mainly because the government is not opening up forums or fair spaces for youths and the new generations to express themselves. The protest that began in July was to seek the removal of Prime Minister Prayu Chang Ocha, a former junta leader, also called to reform the monarchy, breaking a long-standing taboo against criticizing the institution. Criticism of the monarchy can be punished by 15 years in jail under Thailand's least majesty laws, but it has become widespread. South Korean government imposes strict social distancing measures to prevent a spike in new coronavirus cases. South Korea will impose stricter social distancing rules for the greater Seoul area after easing them on warning of an even bigger crisis if anti-COVID-19 efforts fail to dampen a spike in new cases. The government decides to raise the social distancing level to 1.5 for two weeks in the metropolitan area going into effect from November 19. He adds there also will be banned public gatherings for 100 people or more, limit religious services and audiences at sports events to 30% capacity, and require high-risk facilities including clubs and karaoke bars to broaden distance among guests. The restrictions came as the daily cases about 200 for a fourth consecutive days, with a series of cluster outbreaks emerging from offices, medical facilities, and small gatherings in Seoul and surrounding regions where around half of the country's 52 million population live. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency reports 230 new cases, marking the ninth straight day of triple-digit rises and the highest since early September. Thousands of supporters showed their support for Tai Kin and Queen. 
The King of Thailand greets by thousands of supporters in Bangkok, but they're also protesting in the city with demands to reform the monarchy. I'm satisfied with my life. I'm 74 years old already. If something happened, I'm okay with it. I think the monarchy has to change, because time has changed. That's why they appear more in the public. Unrest began in July with calls for the removal of Prime Minister Prayu Chang Ocha, a former junta leader. According to the police, around two and a half thousand protesters gathered at the Democracy Monument in Bangkok, dancing and singing songs mocking the government. Prayut's government holds the majority in parliament because his junta picked the entire upper house before an election last year that opponents says was designed to keep him in power. But Prayut says the vote was fair. Police said they will not use violence to crack down on demonstrators and also deploys more 5,000 troops to maintain order. Protesters says they will turn their back when the royal motorcade pass. Demonstrators increasingly call for reforms to the powerful monarchy, breaking a long-standing taboo against criticizing the institution. Thailand riot police firing water cannon at anti-government protesters. Thai riot police fire a water cannon at protesters as they try to cut their way through razor wire barricades outside the parliament, as lawmakers discusses possible changes to the constitution. Live television images shows water cannon being fired against an advance guard of anti-government protesters who arrive with helmets, masks and who try to remove the coils of wire while the protesters threw back smoke bombs at the police. Protesters are demanding changes to the constitution drawn up by Thailand's former junta leader. They also want the removal of Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, a former army ruler, and reforms to curb the powers of the monarchy. Police set up barricades outside parliament where hundreds of royalists earlier demonstrate to call on lawmakers not to change the constitution. ASEAN countries discuss the signing of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Fifteen Asia-Pacific economies will form the world's largest free trade bloc, a China-backed deal that excludes the United States, which had left the rival Asia-Pacific grouping under President Donald Trump. During the 37th ASEAN Summit, where the 10-member Southeast Asian nations, along with partners in the Asia-Pacific, discusses about the signing of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc hosts a virtual meeting in Hanoi. Vietnam among members of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership at the Partnership's fourth summit. The meeting takes place only hours before the signing of the agreement after eight years of negotiation. Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership is made up of 15 member nations including Australia, China, Japan, Korea and New Zealand, who signed separate free trade agreements with ASEAN nations of Brunei Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. India pulls out of regional comprehensive economic partnership talks in November last year, but ASEAN leader says the door remains open for it to join. And that's all the news for today. Enjoy your weekend and see you again.